What's up dogs? It's Cameron with Venus Theory and today we're here to make a super fat virtual analog respace so let's get started. <laughs> So I got a comment on one of my videos the other day about creating a Joe Ford style bass, and I had never heard of Joe Ford before, uh, so I looked into it, listened to some tracks, and to be honest, didn't particularly care for it, but that's just me. However, the bass design was pretty interesting, and from what I could tell it was just kind of a lot of FM stuff, and it really sounded like Massive, and based on some research I did it seems like he uses Massive only, so I don't know. Anyways, ended up using Retrolog 2 and Cubase to create this kind of weird crazy neuro Reese thing without any resampling, and that was the important part. So let's hop into Cubase and take a look at how I did this. Okay, so today we're here in Cubase, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at how I made this big crazy Reese bass thing uh, using Retrolog, which is a built-in synth in Cubase. Um, however, you can buy this as a VST, and I highly recommend it if you have the money. So let's take a listen to the bass and then get into how it was made. <laughs> So it's a pretty intense bass, and I was really, really happy with it. Um, Retrolog is a synth I use off and on. I kind of have a love-hate relationship with it. So if you've never seen Retrolog, this is what it looks like. And I sometimes use it, and I sometimes don't. But now that I've kind of started to experiment with it more, I'm really starting to gravitate to this over Serum, really. Just more as a personal choice, though, just because, like, with the basses I want to make for our music, this works really, really well. Because our music is very, you know, analog feeling. I don't know. It's, you know, it's not so digital and whatever. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, I, you know, this is what I want to make. So let's talk about how I did this and what's cool about Retrolog. Uh, you will hear there's a lot of background noise. And that is actually just part of the track itself um, due to some of the mixing inserts and stuff like that to emulate you know tape hiss and whatnot so anyways let's go ahead and just talk about retrolog a little bit so retrolog is really really interesting and it's incredibly well made usually i mean the stock cubase synths i never used them all that much so i was always pretty reliant on third-party vsts to create a lot of my sounds and you know i got really really into serum over the last you know little while because you know that was like the synth to have and you could do so much with it however retrolog 2 came out and i mean damn what a synth so basically three oscillators a sub oscillator noise oscillator uh you got some mixed stuff a bunch of filters i think there's 24 in total uh you got some envelopes and stuff lfos um and then two of these i think it's or is it three of them? Nope. Uh, so LFO three and four are actually polyphonic LFOs, which is really, really fun. And there's also a third envelope here. Uh, apart from that, super powerful arpeggiator, and then you got some built-in effects. I don't really use these much, but, you know, you can. So what's cool about this is the type here allows you to do some neat stuff. So if I just play this right now, we've just got a saw wave. Not really that interesting. So you can change the octave, chorus, fine tune. So I mean, you could create just a straight up respace by just detuning the fine, and here you go. Respace. You know, drop it an octave, and you're pretty much dead on with most old school stuff. However, there's a couple interesting types here, and the one I use a lot is called multi. So multi allows you to get multiple voices per oscillator, and there's a maximum of eight. So, you know, that's a whole lot of voices going on for an analog one. Uh, so usually what I do is start at about four, and then you can use this detune to create some just kind of detune noise. So right away, there's a respace. Done. However, what I did was just kind of do this multiple times using multi again, and maybe we'll use a square wave on this one, actually. We can detune it, change the shape a bit. Oscillator three, we could just slap this as a sine wave, tune it down, and that should pretty much do it. Maybe just turn down the second oscillator, and we got this. Which is pretty intense. And then, you know, once you play with cutoff and stuff with a low pass filter, you're pretty much good. 
So you can create a lot of cool stuff with this. So that's an overview of Retrolog, what it does and what it sounds like. And you can hear that's a pretty damn convincing virtual analog synth. So what did I do? Um, you can probably follow along with this in Serum, um, maybe Massive as well, because uh, you kind of need this third oscillator, but not really. So how I made this was four saw waves, four square waves, and then four sine waves. And they're detuned pretty heavily, so 22 cents, 20 cents, and 23 cents. So Massive and Serum, I don't really think there's a way to do that. But, you know, if you just detune everything a bit, pretty much the same effect. Noise uh, is very, very important for these types of sounds. So I used uh, the white bandpass filter, um, but you can just use white noise if you want. And then just blended it in very, very low. I mean, like, maybe 10% to start. And, you know, if you're going above 20%, you're probably just using too much. In terms of oscillator levels, everything's about even. Um, but this does all get more complicated in a minute here. So for the filter shape, low pass at 18 decibels per octave. Uh, you could create that in Serum or whatever you want to use. Distortion, uh, the... Retrolog synth here has a built-in distortion, and the tube one is super, super nice. So massive, you can use a classic tube. Um, Brawner tube might actually be a better choice. And in Serum, the tube distortion should pretty much do it, or just distort the filter. So how does this whole thing work? So, I mean, you can see it's a pretty, pretty simple patch. And then the only other thing I did is pitch bend is an octave instead. However, what I did is tie stuff to CC automation. So when I move my main CC thing here, you'll see what moves. So we've got our cutoff, our distortion, the resonance of the filter, and yeah, pretty interesting stuff. So this allows me to create this kind of cool movement just right away. So if I uh, take off all my inserts on this, and we get rid of all the channel strip stuff, this is what this bass sounds like just right away. So, you know, pretty fat, pretty nice. Um, also, make sure you're mono and you got a bit of portamento going on. Outside of that, I uh, didn't do anything else in the synth. Most of this sound really comes from the processing afterwards. So what I did first off is just use the built-in chorus. Um, you can use any chorus plugin for this, so that takes it here. Which gives it that nice, big detune thing. And I don't know what it is about chorus and basses, but I mean, damn, and does it ever create just great sound. After that, I uh, ran that into an H comp to do some soft clipping. Um, didn't really care about the threshold. I just kind of wanted to glue everything together and get a little more distortion going on. Um, after that, well, we'll talk about this in a sec. So the H comp and the chorus, when you put those together, it really brought this bass to life, and that's what this is. So in Cubase, there's this plugin called Magneto 2, and it's a tape saturation plugin. So any tape saturation thing will do. And I mean, I drove this all the way. So I mean, just drive the shit out of it and see what happens. So this is what that sounded like. And it really started to break up and sound nice, but especially when you start moving the filter around, it sounds really cool. After that, uh, flanger and flangers are hard. I have a, again, a pretty much love-hate relationship with flangers. So really, really slow rate. Uh, the range I've restricted to a pretty minimal bit. I just kind of fucked around with this until it sounded good. Feedback turned it down really low. Uh, feedback on flangers just, I don't know. It screws everything up every time for me. I'm, maybe I'm just not approaching it right. Mix, uh, about 30 to 40% usually, and that's about it. After that, uh, well, we'll play this real quick. So the flanger after the distortion really sounds cool too. And that's what gave it that, you know, old school dungeon Reese vibe. Trash 2 was very, very important for this bass in multi-band mode. So the low is all left alone. Uh, the second band, I just tried to emulate the uh, distortion plugin in Ableton saturator um, with the analog curve, I think is what I was going for. Or maybe it was soft. I can't remember. Anyways, so if you can get a curve like that going on, or, you know, a wave shaper kind of like that, uh, that should pretty much do it. After that, uh, Wow 2 here was the real critical bit. So once I had this sound going before the Wow 2 here, this is what I had. And 
I was pretty happy with that, but it didn't feel right. So obviously notch filters and narrow base is just the thing you do. So what I did is I took a notch filter here with a little bit of resonance and I assigned it to the LFO. So I took it to the sine LFO, set it to free mode so it's not synced to anything and just made it real slow. And this movement is really what creates this bass. And especially when you drop that low pass down real, real low just to kind of get a sub thing going on, it still creates this really nice movement to the bass. And as you start opening that filter up, it just kind of moves on its own, which is really nice. So after that, everything was kind of sounding a bit messy. Uh, so I dropped in another H comp to glue everything together again. And same process, just soft clipping. So driving the output. Uh, after that, C4 stereo. This is kind of an optional step. I just did this for the sake of the mix. So this is just a multiband compressor. And I just use this to kind of glue things back together. And you can see I really, really, really crushed the high end. So that's totally optional up to you. I, you know, just did it because I mean, I did that after everything else was done here. So moving along uh, the strip here, there's a built in channel strip here in Cubase. Uh, sorry, this one. So if we look at the channel strip, there's some distortion stuff you can do. Uh, so tube saturation, and I just drove this up a lot, um, because in Cubase, you can only have eight inserts. So I just use tube saturation to drive it more. Um, so if you can use more than eight, just drop in another saturation at the end of everything. Or if you can't, I guess you could just send this to an effects track and do it that way. So the channel strip tube distortion really gives this a lot of grit. And it kind of just messed with the low mids in a really pleasing way. Apart from that, uh, EQ was pretty important. So I took out uh, some around 60 hertz here, uh, a little bit around 400-ish hertz, and then gave a nice high shelf at about 5.5K. And that just kind of cleaned everything up. So that's pretty much this bass in a nutshell. And yeah. So that does it for this video. I hope you guys like this, and I hope you learned something. As always, be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys again soon.